Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you again to Simplified RSA, the guys who makes it looks easy, as usual. So, um, today, we are stepping up a bit. Uh, this is our presented question for the day. Um, I'm going to represent it somewhere here. Uh, the question reads, the sketch below represents the functions f of x, which is equal to x cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d and g of x, which is equals to ax plus q. The point a, b, and c, and we can see we are given the values of b is 2 and minus 16, are points where the two graphs intersect. So the two graphs intersect between the three points a, b, and c as given. And we are also given that c is 6 and 0. Um, which represents the x-intercepts of both the, the, the functions. Um, while L and M are the turning points of F, so L and M represents the turning points of F, as we can see, F is a polynomial like that. It has two turning points. Now, very interesting question. Um, 8.1, we have to show that the value of B is equals to minus 5, C is equals to minus 8, and D is equals to 12. If it is given that F prime X is 3X squared minus 10X minus 8. For a question like this, guys, um, you can't get this one wrong because it's a situation where you are given the values that you are expected to get. Unlike them saying, find the values of A, B, and C like that. But now if they've given you what to expect or if they are telling you to prove or show, it means that you can fight your way out to get the marks. But nonetheless, let's go. Let me show you how it's done. So we have to find the values of B, C, and D. And we are given that F prime X is equals to 3X squared minus 10x minus 8. Somehow you can see that there is a relation to this and that the first thing we must do now is to get f prime x from the original equation and relate it to what we have here. This is how this is how we do it. So f prime x is going to be, if I differentiate this, I will have 3x squared plus if I differentiate bx squared, I will have, in terms of x only, I will have 2bx. And then if I differentiate um, cx, it would be plus c, whereby the differential of d is a constant number. The differential of constant number is just 0. So there's no need to write plus 0. I'm just going to leave it like that. So of here, already from here, the terms that can give me... Uh, B and C, they are already visible because obviously from here, you can see that 2B is equals to minus 10 because the coefficient of X is minus 10. The coefficient of X here is 2B. So I can relate that if this is prime F prime X, this is F prime X, 2B is equals to minus 10. If I divide by two both sides, I can tell that B is equals to minus 5, which is exactly the proof of what I've been given on the question. Also, C, you can see that C is as good as minus eight there, as it appears. So C is equals to minus eight. Now, how do I get the value for D? Because now I know that F of X is equals to X cubed plus, I just proved that B is minus five. So I'm just gonna write this as minus five X squared minus, I just proved that C is eight, which is negative eight also, minus X, minus eight X plus D. Now, I don't know what the value of D is. To get the value of D in this case, I have the point that is given there. They gave me the point B. Point B is my, point B is two and minus 16. So, um, we know that a point is represented as x, y. So I can substitute 2 where there's x. I substitute minus 16 where there's y to solve for d because that point passes through the equation of f of x. So minus 16 is equals to 2 cubed minus 5 
2 squared minus 8, 2 plus D. If I simplify this one further, I would have that minus 16 is equals to... So if I simplify this part here, 2 cubed minus 5, 2 squared minus 8 um, squared, I would get that this is the same as minus 28 plus D. I'm closer to getting my value for D. Therefore, D will be, if I take the 28 to the other side, it's going to be 28 minus 16. 28 minus 16, that gives me 12, meaning I did prove, according to the question, that the value for B is minus 5, the value for C is minus 8, and the value for D is 12, like that. So that's how you would approach it as well. So 8.1, that was easy, right? I strongly believe this question is not as difficult as it seems. Let's analyze the, the image closer. This is what we are given. I just want us to understand the situation. So we are given the two functions, um, f of x and g of x. And we are given a whole lot of points. But then 8.2, we are required to get the turning points. And the turning points is L and M, meaning this is our first turning point, which is L. This is our turning point, which is M, for the function of Y. So we just have to get the X and Y value for that. And we also have to get the X and Y value for that. And that is quite easy, guys, because all you need to do, you have to get F prime, F prime X, let it to be zero, get the values of X, and then whatever values you get, you substitute them to your original equations. That would be the turning point for L and M. This is what I'm talking about. Now we know that F prime X is equals to 3X squared minus 10X minus 8. Therefore, I have to let this to be zero, and then I solve for X here. 3X squared minus 10X minus 8 is equals to 0. If I get the factors of this, so the factors would be to get 3x squared, it would be 3x and x. And to get minus 8, the factors will be 4 and 2, considering that the middle term has to be minus 10 as well. So I'll write the 4 here and the 2 here. And I'll put the negative here to have the bigger number to be 12, such that the 12 will, 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 will subtract the 2. So these are my factors, meaning x is equals to positive 4 or x is equals to minus 2 over 3. So these are my x values for the turning points. To get the y values for the turning point, I have to get f of minus 2 over 3. Um, which is going to be minus 2 over 3 cubed. So if I simplify f of minus 2 over 3, I will then get 400 over 27. If you don't trust me, you can quickly punch all the values on your calculator to simplify this. It would be 400 over 27. And then again, to get the... The other side, which is M, I will have to get F of 4. And F of 4, again, is going to be 4 cubed minus 5, 4 squared minus 8, 4 plus 12. Therefore, this will give me, this will give me negative 36 negative 36, meaning the coordinates of M is 4 and negative 36, and the coordinates of L is negative 2 over 3 and 400 over 27, according to what I get there. So what does this mean? Looking at our structure, this means um, for L, 
we have for L we have negative two over three there and we have four hundred over twenty seven there. And then for M we have positive four here and we have negative thirty six there. So that's what we have for our coordinates of L and M. Um we can proceed to the next one. I strongly believe that this question was not challenging at all. Uh, given 8.3, we are required to determine the equation of G, which is a straight line. And for a straight line, if you have two points, it's easy to determine the equation. And in this case, that's what we have. Analyzing our image again, we are given a straight line, which, repre which represents G. We have one point, which is B. B is that point there. It's 2n minus 16. And we are also given C. You can see from here, uh, we are given the values of C as it is there. C is um, 6 and 0. So we have two points to can determine the equation of G. Um, this is how it goes. So, like I say, we are having our two points. We have B, which is 2 and minus 6. And then we have also the point C, which is 6 and 0. And we know that a straight line is given by the equation y is equal to mx plus c. y is equal to mx plus c. And to get the value of m, which is the gradient, m is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's how we get the gradient. And we can name our values here. We can call this x1, y1. We can call this x2, y2, such that this is going to be y2 is 0, 0 minus y1, 0 minus minus 16, all over x2, 6 minus 2. Therefore, this is going to give us 0 minus minus 16 is just going to be 16 over 6 minus 2 is going to be 4, which makes our gradient to be 4. Now I have y is equal to 4x plus c. Now to get the value of c, I can either take this point, I substitute it here, or I take this point, I substitute it here. Otherwise, I would get the same value. Um, you can try that if you want with another with the other point. Okay, let me use C, and then if you're watching this, you can use B to substitute here to get the value of C and compare if we're going to get the same answers or not. So now this is how it goes. Where there's Y, I'll put 0, and where there's X, I'll put 4, and I solve for C. So Y is 0 is equal to 4, therefore X is 6 plus C which then makes zero is equal to four times six. It's gonna give me, four times six will give me 24 plus C. Therefore, this means C is minus 24 if I take the 24 to the other side, which means the function for G of X is gonna be four X minus 24. That's how you answer 8.0. Oh, we are answering 8.3, by the way. So 8.3, the function for G is 4X minus 24, which is the straight line that is given here, this straight line for G. So the equation for the straight line is 4X minus 24. Like I say, this question paper may look a bit challenging, but... It's just a walk over, man. There's nothing there. Looking at 8.4, um, if it is further given that the coordinates of point A are X and minus 36, determine the length of AM. Um, this is what I want you to notice. Looking into our structure, we already know that the coordinates of M they were 4 and minus 36, right? The coordinates of M, they were 4 
and minus 36, meaning the value of y here is minus 36. I can write minus 36 there for this point here. The minus 36 is this point, it's this value here. Somehow that minus 36 stretches and becomes part of point A. And you can see point A is the coordinates of both F and G, both F of X and G of X as functions. And now we are given that the point of X at the point of A is X and minus 36. And then we are required to get the length of AM, the length, the size of AM, this, uh, this whole, let me get a different color for that. This, this side, we must get the length from, from, from A to M, the length of AM the size of this line there. So the size of AM is obviously, we know that if it's zero here, from here up to there, it's four units, but we just have to get the other side of M. So now just getting the X intercepts of this side here would help me get the length of LM because I know that from here to there, is eight units. I mean, it's four units because the value of X here is four. We found that the turning point of this, it was four here. So from here to there is four units. I just have to get what is uh, the length from um, when uh, from minus 36 when X is zero up until this point here. And I am given already, I have calculated the equation of this line. I know the equation of this line of G. So everything is in space, actually. Everything is in order. All I need to do here is just to say, um, what is the value of X? What is the value of X when Y is minus 36 as given here? Now, to get that, I will use the equation of G because it's the most simplest one. Look at this. The equation for G is Y is equals to 4X minus 24 as calculated in the previous um, question. But I want to know what is the value of X when Y is minus 36? Therefore, I will solve for x when y is minus 36. Um, this will be 4x is equals to minus 36 plus 24. Therefore, 4x is going to be minus 36 plus 24 